So uh, today, I uh, just want to share with you, uh, just I'm calling them secrets to winning a scholarship. And I will just use my experience to impart knowledge on how you should go about winning a scholarship. A scholarship is an award of money given to a person on the basis of merit. So it is not something that comes freely. It should be given to a person on the basis of merit. And merit means something that is done well. And it can be done well in terms of academic. It can be done well in terms of uh, sports. It can be done well in terms of community service. And probably the most important question here is, how do we get money or who gives out all this money. Um, there are different organizations who could give money. For instance, you can get money from universities. You can get money from colleges. You can get money from banks, private foundations, from unions, from employers, from embassies, and from various companies. So all these prices, you can just apply, you can have to keep your bid and you can uh, get a scholarship or you can get funded. And probably I need to f throw a challenge to you. Do you know that there is a scholarship out there for almost everything? Because people will be wondering, probably there are scholarships for academic only, or scholarships for uh, uh, gender-related matters, etc. But I just want to tell you that there are, are scholarships out there for almost everything. And scholarships may be uh, awarded on the basis of nationality. It can be awarded on the basis of personal interest. can be awarded on the basis of academic performance, your GPA, can be awarded in terms of gender. Nowadays, we can't see uh, scholarships specifically for women, especially women who study the science, technology, engineering, and the mathematics. So you could see that if you look at scholarship aspect in a big picture, you can see, you can find that there are quite a lot of scholarships out there. And before applying any scholarship, there are qualities that are looked for by various scholarship committees. And this scholarship may seem common, I mean, these qualities may seem common to everything. And these scholarships, I've just summarized them and tried to put a, um, a word that captures all, and this word is called catch up. The first C stands for character. You need to uh, be a person of good character. What kind of your characteristics are you a person of good character or not? Because scholarship committee members would love to invest their money into people who have good character. So character is very, very important. The second letter is um, achievement. Achievement in terms of academic, achievement in terms of professional, achievement in terms of um, uh, whatever, whatever you're doing. So you need to achieve, you need to share what kind of successes have you had in the past? So that is very, very important. Another letter is teamwork. This stands for T. Our word is catch up, remember? This word is teamwork. Um, you, you really need to see yourself and come to a point where you can be confident to say, um, uh, uh, I can work in a team. And these are very important issues that will be looked upon by the uh, uh, scholarship committee. 
issues of community service, it was talked earlier by the first presenter. Community service is very, very important. And the good thing, we do have programs in our church. We do engage into community services and probably you might be involving or participating in these uh, services without knowing their value. But I want to tell you today that these activities are very, very crucial because they will add value for your time when you'll be applying, not only for scholarship, but again for, for, for job application. Another letter which is very important is hard work. Yeah, you need to show how hard you are. You need to show, and not to tell. You need to show exactly how hard you work. And hard work, it doesn't mean to, uh, for scholarship application. Hard work is needed for, even in your academic activities, right? Yeah, you need to work very hard so that you can uh, 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 get the expected results after your expectations. And you have another quality which is uh, uniqueness. You need to be unique in whatever you're doing. Uniqueness is one of the important aspects or quality because you need just go beyond the average person and to show that I have this as added advantage, I have this as added uh, quality if you compare with other students or if you compare with other applicants. And the list is long because of the interest of time. I'm just going, uh, because I understand you know these qualities, but uh, the essence of bringing these qualities is to relate these qualities with your application, because at the end of the day, they'll be accessing these qualities in your application. So I will have to tell you how to put these qualities when you apply for a scholarship. So there is issues of purpose, issues of perseverance, issues of personal interest, passion, and the issues of how you have had uh, overcome obstacles or challenges in the past. I remember when you're applying for a scholarship, they are not interested to see uh, what you are going to, to, to do, but they are interested to learn that you have done something. So it is basically based on the past while forecasting for the future. So use the past to make sure that you forecast or you put your career plans for your future goals. Now, to sum up, if you look at these um, qualities, you seek with you and make sure that you don't let them go. Catch them up. Can we all repeat? You catch them up. Catch, catch up. Catch up character. Catch up achievement. Yeah, you catch up that to the end. Tipsy for winning a scholarship. Uh, the first tip is that only apply if you qualify. Only apply if you qualify. When you look into um, the, 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 the scholarship out of it, make sure you go through the aspects, items, one after another, and try to see whether you do qualify or not. If you don't qualify, just let it go. Because there are many scholarships out there, so you have to look for another scholarship that will meet your, 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 your qualities. And remember, these ones are important aspects that will help you to know whether you qualify or not. The second tip is that you need to be precise and accurate. Be precise and accurate. When you're applying for a scholarship, you first need what is needed. And you also have to read from the website or you get any information concerning uh, the organization, or if it is a, a university or wherever you think the, the scholarship is going to be offered so that you know their interest. Be precise. Present information in accuracy. 
Another tip is prioritize your application by deadline. As I said, there are many scholarships and you may wish to apply to as many as possible. So you need to prioritize by deadline. Okay, uh, probably I have, uh, I've seen uh, five scholarships and I'm going to apply all of them. So try to prioritize one after the other so that you can start with the ones that you think the submission deadline is near. Create a resume or a CV, and a good thing is that we have already read and learned about the CV, but a CV for scholarship, you concerned about the accomplishments, what you have accomplished. Mm? We'll see a bit later how to do it. Tailor your application to the sponsor's interest. You need to learn the sponsor's interest. And nowadays, life has been made simple. It is very easy for you to just use your phone over there, provided it is connected with the internet, then you can get all the necessary information about the organization, all information about the scholarship. And the good thing with the scholarship is that in most of the advents, if you look at the advent, you will find it somewhere below for queries, for inquiries, for any problem, please contact. So in case you need to know more about the organization, you need to know more about the scholarship, make sure you utilize that and make most of that information so that you can come up with a good application. Read and follow instruction is another tip. Make sure you read and follow instruction very carefully so that you don't do something that is not required. Make your application stand out from the cloud. When you're applying, make sure your application is unique. It is time to shine. It is time for you to go beyond your horizon. It is time for you to share all the unique abilities that you have. So make sure that your application stands out from the from rest of the Africa. Try to eliminate repetitions. It's very, very important in your application. Make sure that you do respond to issues as asked so that you don't have to repeat. If you don't have to, if you don't understand a question or you don't have you don't understand what you have been asked, the good thing is that you can even ask your colleagues because you still have ample time to make sure that you are to answer or respond to all the questions or aspects that are in that application form. So try as much as you can to avoid repetition and avoid blank spaces in your application. Scholarship can be a uh, can, can based on application form only, but sometimes you may find scholarships need or requires you to do an interview. And the interview could be face-to-face -face or interview could be online or virtual. So it depends on what kind of scholarship you are applying at that particular moment. And the last tip is that you need to practice on a copy of the application form. We need to check our submissions. So make sure you proofread your application before submission. Now, those were the tips. And the one may ask you, what are the differences between the tips and strategies? Tips are just pieces of advice. Pieces of advice. But strategies, these are the little thing. You need to do these ones. Those were advices that you should consider this and that and that, but here is the real thing. The first strategy for winning a scholarship, first is um, preparation. You first need to know how many scholarships are there in a year. If you are aspiring to apply for a scholarship, then you need to start as early as possible. Of course, you're not late, you can start even today. But what I'm saying is preparation, early preparation. 
you should be in a position to say, I want to apply for a scholarship. And what kind of scholarships are you targeting? That is very, very important. Now, if you think of uh, applying for a local scholarship, yeah, you can get information from different organizations. You can get information from um, newspapers. You can get information from websites. You can get information from universities or from embassies. So it's your decision. What do you want? So that when you're preparing, then you can be prepared for something that you are. And for in international scholarships, if you want to study in the USA, or you want to study in Canada, you want to study in Europe, there are conditions, like there are language examinations that you need to undertake. For instance, you need to have a certificate for international English language test. Mm, that is for Europe. There is SAT, there is ACT, there is GRE. These are certificates for language if you want to, to apply for scholarships in those countries. But again, there are other scholarships in Scandinavian countries where they will just need proof that you um, went to, through a universal education system that has um, uh, English as a medium of communication. So if you are to apply and win, you should get prepared. And in the preparation, you should be in a position to decide whether local or international. Another strategy that to win more scholarships, then you, you have to apply for more scholarships. And you can't win if you don't apply. You cannot wait for something on a silver plate. You can't win if you don't apply. So for you to be in a position to win, you must apply. And applying takes a lot of time. Sometimes you need a lot of commitment. You need some kind of hard work. You need to show your character in the application. You need to, to go into that level of, uh, from the average student to you know, you put in some extra issue that is uh, very, very important. So that's why I'm trying to link with the catch-up qualities with how they are used in your application. Uh, another strategy is um, uh, depending for you, most of you are undergrad and you probably looking for postgraduate programs out there. And sometimes you know that these uh, kind of scholarships where we find from the website and professors of their projects and they are inviting students from a certain uh, discipline like, okay, you, if you wanted to do a master's degree or you wanted to do your dissertation, uh, you want to do your postgraduate programs by thesis, then uh, probably we can work together. So these kind of scholarships are there. What you need to do, you develop a concept note, you look for that professor, you communicate, you see how he can uh, be uh, helpful in developing your concept note. So you start developing a concept note in order to be able to uh, be shortlisted or be nominated for uh, that kind of scholarship, especially when you are looking for project-related scholarship. Supervisor is very, very important because if you can't get a supervisor, it means you may not be qualifying for that kind of a scholarship. So uh, that is uh, another strategy that you need to consider. Now, applications may include a, um, a lot of uh, activities. And one of the issues, many issues that uh, when applying for a scholarship, it depends. And some scholarships you may find that it's just question and answer item. It's just a form of questions where you put in your particulars, the name, where you studied, the year of completion, where you want to, you want to study, and your aspirations, issues of that kind. And these are called short answer questions in an application. But you find in other applications, you need to 
uh, list of uh, extracurricular. Mm -hmm. We spoke about extracurricular. So you need to share or to list extracurricular. But listing is nothing rather than explaining or showing what did you do exactly with these uh, extracurricular activities. Issues of grade transcripts, we call them transcript, academic transcripts here, but the issues of um, how did you perform your academic performances of vital consideration. But again, in uh, these kind of scholarships, you can find that most of these scholarships, uh, they have something they call SES plumps or cover letter. They give you a topic or they give you some areas where you need to talk about. And it is time for you to sell. It is time for you to explain how you fit the most as far as uh, your discipline and your career goal is concerned. So essays and cover letters are very, very important. And uh, you need to have enough time to make sure that you really make a good essay or you will make a good cover letter. You need to shine, and you can only shine on the EC or on the cover letter, because you are given a freedom to tell or to talk about what, who you are and what are your aspirations. A lot of recommendations are also important, but for this case, you are not the one to write letters of recommendations. Your referees are the ones who will have to write letters of recommendations. And we'll see a little bit later on how these letters of recommendations, because some of, this, some of students have been taking this aspect for granted. Recommendation, because these letters are valued. So make sure you get a person who will try to talk on your behalf how you fit for the scholarship position than any person. So interviews, as I said, some applications may just need application forms, but some scholarships may require both interviews and application forms. Also, you may include list of awards. I remember these are guided aspects. Don't include if you're not asked. Don't include if you're not asked. These are guiding aspects. What to include, what not to, to include. So you make sure, make sure you follow instructions. Now, another strategy is that um, when you're looking for a scholarship, it's a win-win situation. It's a win-win approach. And with this strategy, it is that you use the catch-up qualities, mm? your character will sell. Your academic performance will help you to sell. Your teamwork, your hard work and spirit, your, your catch-up, uniqueness are the things that you will have to show that you qualify and your best placed to win for that particular scholarship. So when you're getting a chance to fill in an application from, don't waste your time, but I always like this say that you give energy to things that give you energy. Don't waste your time. Give energy to things that give you energy. So if you think the scholarship is not for you, and you think that the scholarship, uh, this is, uh, seem to be, uh, it has a lot of questions, and most of these questions cannot be answered in my, with my qualities or with what I already obtained, then you better you. Just escape it and look for something that you call it. So when a situation comes here, and you must tell the sponsor that when I get this scholarship, I will have to do this, and my impact will not end with myself. They are interested to see how will you impact the community, the society. So when you're on that aspect, make sure you are trying to convince that through that scholarship, then you can do, and the world, society, the community that around you will benefit as well. On the AC or cover letter, you need to 
time to convince the scholarship committee, why are you the most fitting candidate for the award? That is only what they need to know. So you really need to convince the scholarship committee that you are the most fitting candidate. And you only convince them by using the culture. Are we together? Are we together? Thank you. And you must also show that the scholarship will not only help you, but will assist you to other goals like educational career in the society, yourself, your family, uh, beyond the borders, etc. And package your application. Package your application once everything is in order. Proofread your application before submitting it. But most importantly, you may spend all this time applying, looking for information from one place to another to make sure that your application is complete. But you may fail short of deadline. So make sure you don't miss the deadline. You work hard, prepare well your application, but make sure you don't miss the deadline. Uh, tips for letters of recommendation, as I said. Uh, uh, first, you ask the person to write you a great letter. I remember we are saying with uh, scholarship application, it is not something that you, you, know, you can just do it at leisure. You need to take your time, really. You need to be serious with what you're doing. You need to put up your catch up qualities and make sure that you fit the most. And therefore, it should not end here because uh, in other countries, they do value the letter of recommendation as well. So you need to get someone who will uh, write a good letter of recommendation. And uh, when uh, asking someone to write a recommendation letter for you, it should be relevant. For you, it is easier because you have searched it from the uh, website and you know about uh, uh, scholarship details and all the necessary information, but your referee may not know this. So it's you to share with him or her your region, your CV, because you have already tailored according to the interest of the sponsor. Share your CV so that whenever he or she writes your recommendation later, at least he or she knows the most important details to put in the letter. So don't just pick uh, someone who uh, will not help you to make you stay in, um, in the competitive environment. So those are things which you may consider them less uh, important, but they are quite very, very important in the end. So the most important things for scholarship committees are three E's. The first is excellent grades, and you're talking of your performance, GPA, and all that, to make you sure that you are eligible. Um, engagement with the community services or whatever kind of activity that you can engage and participate, get involved, and extracurricular activities. Um, when searching for a scholarship first, search when you start searching, you should start as soon as possible, as I told you. Start as soon as possible, know what kind of scholarships you're looking for. Use a free scholarship matching services like FastWeb, FinR.com, um, scholarship.com. And um, there's another important aspect um, sometimes you may find an optional question in your application. So if it is there, you should know that it is important. Spend your time and make sure that you feel it. Don't leave blank spaces because if it was not important, they would have not put it there. Now since it is there, then take it seriously. Mm, last three. Use a professional email address. Clean up the contents of your Facebook account, Instagram. You know, they are being read with the whole universe. 
So make sure you clean up the contents of your Facebook account, Instagram, whatever you have, and any other irrelevant uh, uh, information from your accounts. Because, you know, before granting or before awarding a scholarship to you, the scholarship committee will have to vet all the candidates and see whether they are eligible candidates. So they will go into those accounts. So if uh, they are not cleaned up, if uh, they are containing um, information which are uh, irrelevant, you may find yourself missing some of these um, credible um, uh, scholarships or award. Google your name to see what it shows up. It's just simple. Just Google. Anytime, just enter your name before uh, applying for anything and see what it shows up. You can do something before it is uh, getting to a negative ethic. Make a copy of your applications before mailing, and you can review them once more time before submitting them. And if it happens that your application has been rejected, as I said, you may do it first time, you may fail, but failing doesn't mean that you cannot secure or win a scholarship. So you do it first time, if it is not successful, you may ask for the viewer's comments so that you can learn from the mistake. And the next time when you submit your application, then it may be fine. Most common mistakes that should be avoided when applying for a scholarship. Missing deadlines, make sure you work and meet the submission deadline. Failing to proofread the application, that is very critical. Failing to follow instructions. The ACRM issues of number of recommendations, issues of word count, those are very, 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 very important. Make sure you adhere to all these. Omitting required information, applying for an award when you don't qualify, don't waste your time. Don't uh, uh, waste your time. Failing to award or to apply for an award for which you are eligible, probably there are some sections that you fit more and you're not telling them that I fit more on this because of this and this. So uh, make sure you, you, you balance your application. And failing to tailor the application to the sponsor's interest. is another common mistake that have made uh, some of applicants fail. Writing a boring AC. When you're writing your AC, it should be a storytelling, tell your story. Uh, tell, let them learn from you while uh, explaining what you did and uh, what uh, your future uh, or your career, career goals. Also, with the scholarship application, be aware of scholarship scams. You know, scholarships exist to give you money, and they don't want to take money from you. So if you apply or you think or you plan for a scholarship application and you find somewhere people are asking money, possibly that could be a scam. Scholarships exist to give you money and you don't spend your money for any uh, scholarship application. Never invest more than a postage stamp, especially for those which um, will require you to submit physical hard copies. So um, uh, uh, make sure you just, if it is a hard copy, then you stamp, you pay for a stamp. Nobody can guarantee that you would win a scholarship. It's just you and your God. Don't give out personal details, issues of credit cards, issues of bars, this would be part of these scholarship scams. Don't do that. Um, there are quite a good number of application uh, scholarship apps. Yes, you can use your phone, you can use 
your computer, you can use anything that is connected with the internet to get any information about scholarships. And all of the below apps are available for Android and for iPhone. I'm not going to, 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 to talk to our um, but you can see um, they are there. And if you can still need them, we will just share the slides. Scholarship search engines are there as well. You can, uh, you can just look at them and see how they can help you. And there are many other as you deem fit and as your catch up qualities are. Yeah, so in conclusion uh, that um, the whole process of scholarship search, it is not something that is quite easy. It is something that would require a lot of your, a lot of hard work, a lot of uh, initiatives, kind of, you know, determination and all the other important aspects. And in conclusion, I can simply say, if you look at this, um, you need the catch-up quality, as we said, the character, achievement, teamwork, community engagement, issues of hard work, issues of uniqueness, perseverance, interest, passion, you know, and all those as your list of traits to make you qualify. If you don't qualify by having all these, then you should wait for another scholarship. Now, after having these catch-up qualities, you need to use the strategy that we have seen for a winning scholarship. And I believe if you use these strategies, you will be in a better position to win your scholarship. But again, Avoid common application mistakes when you are doing your application. And you need to proofread, you need to get a great rate of recommendation. And you know success is all about confidence. You need to be confident with your qualities. You need to be confident with the scholarship that you're applying. 